welcome to the last session of today. And the uh, first speaker of the afternoon session is uh, Ramadevi Pichai from Bombay, and she will tell us something about uh, not polynomials, homological invariants, and topological strings. wonderful conference I've been enjoying. I'm also thankful to the organizers for giving me the opportunity to give this talk. So this title, this is probably the area of meeting down of mathematicians and physicists. So this is slightly, I've been looking at many of these problems in mathematics from Chen Simon's gauge theory and later on how they appear in topological strings. Okay, so that's the plan of my talk. I'll briefly tell you about not polynomials from gauge theory. And recently, in April, we had some results on mutant knots. So I'll explain what this mutant is. And then the various developments in the last 15 years, how to see homology and homological invariance. I'll briefly, it's a 25 minute talk. Let me try to give a flavor of it. And then what I have contributed, looking at large inch on Simons and closed string topological string duels. And finally, there are a lot of list of problems which I have been looking at, which I thought I will share with you. Okay, so just like periodic tables of atoms, there is a beautiful knot table by Chiselweit and Rolfson. So I have just put the three crossing, if you go to knot atlas and pull down all these knot diagrams. So this is a three crossing, then four crossing, dot, dot, dot. You can keep going on. So that's the periodic table, which I, give, I would call it as periodic table of knots. Okay, so churn simons theory seems to be giving us a good framework to study such knots in three dimension. So these are non-trivial in three dimension. Even though it's tubular in knot atlas, it's actually a line. Okay. So we look at Chern Simon's action on S3, three sphere, based on any compact semi simple gauge group, and it is a three form on a three sphere. K is the coupling, and you have A, which are the matrix valued gauge connection. And we are interested in operators, which are gauge invariant and topological. They are the Wilson loop operators, and the expectation values are supposed to give information about the knot, and there are differences for different gauge groups and different representations of the gauge groups. So Z is the partition function. Typically, these partition functions are supposed to encode information about three manifold. And in fact, this S3 is encoded in this partition function, whose form can be determined by surgery. Okay. So how do we find? So we see in the literature, everybody evaluates polynomials, but I formally given here where the polynomials are not evident. But you have a nice prescription starting with Witten's work, where he reproduced the skin relation for Jones and Homefly. And before, without even going through the skin relation, we can use the properties of the Vesumino conformal field theory to evaluate the not invariant or not polynomials directly. The two inputs are, we use this connection that whatever is happening inside the bulk you slice it into two pieces, and in each piece, you have a two-dimensional boundary, which you take it to be the S2, and you look at the Vesumino conformal field theory. And if you have some number of punctures, then you put in those primary fields of the Vesumino conformal field theory, and you study n-point conformal blocks, in this case, four-point conformal blocks. And the other thing is that the same trefoil, which I showed in the first slide, can be redrawn as you know, a braid, it is actually three crossings in the braid, and then you do the close thing. Sometimes this is called as a plat diagram. So that is a theorem that any knot can be obtained either by closure or plaiting of braids. Okay, so how does that go? So we finally essentially come down to two dimension in this evaluation using this equivalent. And here it is a four punctured boundary, and we have to write the state and the when you exchange the primary fields between the middle two punctures, 
you have a braiding operator, operating price and a psi naught is the state which I associate for this, that this number is what it will give you the naught invariance. Okay. So, to find this explicitly, you need to expand it in the four point conformal block of the Vesumino conformal field theory. Typically, if you have different primary fields which are in different representations, then you could either use this four point conformal block or the other channel which is related by a duality matrix. And this duality matrix or fusion matrix is one of the important things and there are a lot of resemblance between Vesumino conformal field theory and the quantum groups. Okay. So, so this T representation is also dictated what all it can take and it takes either in the tensor product of these two or the conjugate of this. It does not make a difference if you are doing SU2, but if you are doing SUN or other groups, you need to worry about putting the conjugate of those representations. And this duality matrix because of this close connections to quantum groups, they can also be the many of these properties are very similar to the Wigner Sibje symbol and you they are all proportional to the quantum Wigner Sibje symbol. Okay. Since I am going to concentrate only on knots here and not on links, links can have different primary fields, but since knot is made of only one going world line, it carries a single representation, but when it hits a punk, when it hits the boundary, some of the punctures can be going out of the boundary or into the boundary. Depending on that orientation, some of the representations will be R, the remaining two will be R bar if I am looking at a four punctured S2 boundary. Okay, so, we expand it and then by not equivalence, we can fix this coefficient to be the quantum dimension of the R naught square root of that and we could directly write in terms of the quantum dimension of the representation and the braiding eigenvalues. The choice of the basis here because it is braiding in the middle two strand, I choose my basis which has the you know the diagram which I had here, I choose this basis. And how do we see that it is a kind of a polynomial in variable Q? you need to replace dimension Q of S as in variable Q, where Q is related to the coupling constant and also this is the quadratic Casimir of the group gauge group G and it will be dependent on coupling constant and the rank of the group. And you have the, if the both middle two strands are parallelly oriented, then the braiding eigenvalue, this is frame corrected, this is required to take care of not equivalences and it is also called standard framing eigenvalues and this if you plug in here, you will find this can be written as a function of Q. Okay. Similarly, if you take the figure 8 diagram, the same figure 8 diagram can be drawn. Here it is kind of a closure and a plat, so sometimes it is called as a quasi plat and this diagram evaluation if you see you do the braiding here in the middle two and then you go to the side to go from middle to the side, you need the duality matrix. So, you need to use the duality matrix and the braiding eigenvalues and isotopic equivalences and you can put the orientation. You will see that these two are anti parallel and you will have anti parallel eigenvalues which are you know which we need to take in standard framing to be this. So, there are some frame correction which we put in to make topological equivalence of knots and with this we will get the for, uh, invariant for the figure 8 in terms of variable Q. Okay. So, from these two examples, I have kind of motivated you that knot invariance involves braiding eigenvalues which are dependent on Q and also fusion matrices which are proportional to Wigner 6J symbol, which are also proportional to Q. So, fusion matrices are known explicitly for the SU2 representations. So, this helps us to write the knot invariance completely for any knot in SU2. Unfortunately, for SUN, we know only for few representations, 
by using knot equivalences, we draw the same knot in different ways and then we could fix some of the quantum Wigner 6J for the SUN group in this paper which is probably more than two decades and recently with my student who is in the audience, Zodin Mavia, we fixed some more representation which was useful to study link but purely by using knot equivalence and Wigner 6J and then we could show them to be written in terms of variables which are dependent on the coupling constant and the rank of the group. Some of the well known knot polynomials in the mathematics literature corresponds to the fundamental representation. So, for example, Jones corresponds to SU2 group in fundamental and then this is the jargon that you put any symmetric representation with n boxes, we call it n colored and they are denoted by Jn and SUN is home fly, there were six people who did this work and maybe there are two more also, we sometimes call it as home fly PT in any knot theory meeting and PN is the colored home fly. SON group is typically applicable for unoriented knots and that is Kaufman for fundamental and colored Kaufman. Just to give an example for trefoil, it is the ratio of the trefoil knot invariant up to this unknot normalization. Unknot normalization is usually taken to be the quantum dimension of a representation. <coughs> Okay, so for replacing any other higher spins of SU2, we observed in the literature that there is a very neat way in which colored Jones can be written in terms of Q Pochamer and similarly for 41 and these two belong to a class of twist knots where the twisting factor P is the number of full twists which if it is plus 1, it is 3 1 which is trefoil minus 1 which is 4 1. And this result of 3 1 and 4 1 for colored Jones with this twisting factor information is good enough to write any colored Jones for any of these twist knots. So, that is one observation. The main motive was to use some of these data to get some hang on writing the Wigner 6J symbol for at least the symmetric representations of SUN. So, that is the motivation, and this result was indicative that this could be, this result could be extended to the context of SUN and these knots can be rewritten in terms of the <coughs> braiding eigenvalues and the Wigner 6J duality matrices, okay. So, the N colored, so the work with Satoshi Nawata and Zordin Mavia in 2012 on the stress knots for the colored home fly gave us more data and helped us to find a closed form expression for the quantum group of U, it's technically called as UQSLN quantum Wigner 6J symbol where the representations are should all be symmetric or conjugate of symmetric representation. So, this R1, R2, so the box with a you know bold dot is actually a vertical column with capital N minus 1 boxes for the SUN, the rank N. So, this this box should be treated like a vertical box with n minus 1 boxes. So, the representations, these are symmetric with n 1 boxes, they are conjugate of symmetric with n 2 boxes and then you write the fusion matrix elements allowed by this constraint for this most general class where this is R and R bar if you are looking at knots and there is another type where this is both are of R type and these two are R bar type. So, these the first type is symmetric and the second type is does not have the symmetric type matrices and these are the only two types at least for the symmetric representations following the twist knot result we could conjecture a very neat form for it which looks very similar to Kirlo Reshnikan. So, this expression we could achieve by writing it in terms of the weights of the representation projecting it onto the roots, we could write which is exactly almost similar to SU2 except for there is some z is an integer and there is a finite number of some finite sum here and c z had to be fitted by looking at various twist knots for p 
sum plus 4 to minus 4, we could actually fix what that C z is and then we try to look at some more representation and verified that this is correct. So, the deltas have this neat thing with the factorials and the type 1 C z was of this compact form and the second type 2 was this form. So, this was one of the results which I think was important to work out any colored n colored home fly polynomial which could not have been done if we did not have this data. Okay. So, what have we achieved? We have we have kind of given a data which allows us to work out n colored home fly polynomial drawn as quasi plat of four strand braids figure 8 I drew it as a quasi plat and every S 2 puncture had only four S 2 boundary had only four punctures. Now, you know that all knots may have many number of strands and you, your data is not sufficient to write the polynomial for such knots. So, what is the way to get with this data the knot polynomial for other knots? Okay. So, this was one of the puzzle. Of course, this was already there in my paper with Kaul and Govindarajan where this one if you see it is a three strand braid or four strand braid and I am looking at a capping, it is a quasi plat which I am looking at and for such a case my methodology may not work, but what we can do is by using various moves which is the read master moves, you could try and redraw the same knot in this fashion wherever I slice will be a four puncture. If I slice it here, I get an eight puncture which is not a good sign, but whereas here I get a four punctured S 2 boundary and that is what I need to do my computation. Of course, some of these states involves side strand braiding, this is side strand, middle strand and this one. This intermediate state needs some more work which I will show it as a building block which helps us to do this computation. Okay. For example, 1071 is one of the chiral knot which was not detected by Kaufman, Homefly and Jones. So, this is one of the examples which I took which I tried to redraw as each one is a four punctured S 2 boundary, but this intermediate boundary has three S 2 boundaries unlike these other cases where I have one S 2 boundary and this is another building block and similarly this diagram which is 10, 152 can be redrawn this way. So, it is just a neat way of redrawing some of these knots uh, as if when I can slice some of the S 2 boundaries or the three manifolds, the slices which I have made has one or two or many S 2 boundary and then I need to write what should be the state in the tensor product of these three S 2 boundaries and so forth. Okay. So, so, this is some of the building blocks. You need to know the state for this, state for this which is for closure and for the plat and any arbitrary braid with two S 2 boundaries, but this is only involving four strands, but then intermediately you could glue some three manifolds with R such boundaries. So, with this boundaries you can also write what should be that state as a tensor product state for all these R boundaries with a weight factor here and that can also be nicely seen that if you try to glue one of them here, you should get back an R minus 1 boundary and that exactly fixes that this should be the form for the building block for the R boundary, R S 2 boundary 3 manifold. Okay, some more if you see the not 942, I needed some of these states like this and this can be redrawn using these building blocks and the 3 S 2 boundary building blocks. So, it is a very systematic exercise which enables us to draw many knots and it is a case by case basis we try to redraw using these building blocks. So, we have drawn many dots using these building blocks enabling n colored home fly polynomial, but the punch line is Chern Simon's theory with any gauge group arbitrary representation, we would think that if two knots are not distinguished by Jones, Kaufman or Homefly, at least the John Simons invariant should distinguish, but unfortunately the n colored Homefly polynomial 
do not distinguish a class of knot which are called mutants. What is mutant? You take a region in a knot, it is called technically as a two tangle. If you do a 180 degree rotation about an x axis or a y axis, like here the three crossing and two crossing got exchanged by doing a 180 degree rotation about y axis, then you say that this is the mutant of this. This is a very famous mutant which is known as Kinoshita, Terasaka and Conway mutants. So, we need to, so we have clearly shown that symmetric representation do not distinguish any mutants. We have even given a formal proof for symmetric representation, but for mixed representation we do not have a data of quantum Wigner's Cj symbol to work out these mutant invariants. Fortunately, in July 2014, this Ju and Jokers had given a very neat form for the Wigner 6J symbol for a mixed representation with two boxes in the first row and one box in the second row, which is also called 2, 1. And we wanted to check our method of evaluating this colored home fly for the mutant pair using that data, just to check whether we will be able to get the results. So, this is with one of my student Vivek Kumar Singh and Satosh Navata. We worked out the two not mutant pairs and we found, we got a complete result which is indeed a polynomial in two variable and it did in the distinguish the Kinoshita, Terasaka and Conway knot which made a lot of impact in the knot theory community. Further with the Russian group and my student, we had enumerated evaluation of 2 and invariant and the methodology will be true for any other representations which are of this mixed representation type and we had tabulated. We have also found a class of mutants which are of pretzel type with anti parallel odd braid, they cannot be distinguished. So, it is still a problem with the 2 and representations, but there are information that higher representations like 4 boxes in the first row and 2 boxes in the second row can actually distinguish any mutant. We are yet to see such Wigner 6J symbol to determine and authenticate that result. Of course, this uh, work even before that Morton had made a statement from his approach that 2 1 colored uh, can distinguish for n greater than 3 and we were explicitly able to do it and get the result for each of those polynomials, whereas he had the difference between the two polynomial evaluation. <coughs> okay. One of the crucial input about mixed representation is that multiplicity. So, as long as we do symmetric representation, there is no issue about multiplicity, but you have multiplicity issue once you go into other representations like this 2 1 representation. You can see that I have put another index. These representation occurs only once, whereas this diagram, Young diagram, which I call it as 3 to 1, they appear twice. So, this has to be incorporated in writing your conformal block. Earlier, the misunderstanding was I was thinking that this and this index should be same, the multiplicity index, but technically to get a irrep t as a diagram, you can use a multiplicity index at this three point vertex to be different from this three point vertex. So, this is something which was missed in my earlier works 20 years ago, but Ju and Joker's paper clarified that this is the way you should look at it. So, in the process the dimension of this four point conformal block will be actually in this particular case there are eight reps, but it will become a 10 by 10 matrix. So, that, that plays a crucial role in computing the knots and we could distinguish the 2 1 invariance. So, multiplicity issue shows up there. There are other things which also has some interesting like the z of S 3, the partition function for S 3, one could write the partition function for a whole list of 3 manifolds which are obtained by doing surgery of knots in S 3. So, this is licorice Wallace theorem and you could see that there can be more than you can either do it on this kind of a half link diagram with you know two framings on the two components or on a knot and you could also do it on two different and 
you know, the lens spaces also have, you have a lens space with P number of self crossings here, whose surgery will give you LP1 and LP, Q can be obtained from this kind of knot. So, this was known in the literature and we could try to use the meaning of surgery in writing a formula and only thing is since there are two nodes which can give rise to the same three manifold, that ambiguity can be removed by this Kirby move calculus. Any two nodes which are related by Kirby move 1 or Kirby move 2 will give you the same three manifold. Using this information, we could write the partition function for those list of three manifold as proportional to the colored home fly polynomials not only the symmetric, it should involve all the representations here. So, this is one information which looked interesting to look at in the context of topological strings, which I will come back. But what are the questions which I would like to answer from these Chern Simons data? Large n expansion of log of Zm, can we do it? Can we give closed string interpretation? And similarly, there are some observations on these colored, in fact, even her home fly as an expansion in two variables, A is q to the capital N and you have this expansion which is a Lorentz series with Cij being integer coefficients. So, this is a question which has been asked for the last 10, 12 years, what is the topological meaning or the reason? Okay, so, there was uh, not even 10, 12, it is 15 years. So, there were two parallel developments even for understanding this from the physics point of view, which is topological strings BPS state, where the counting of number of BPS states will account for these integers, this Woguri Wafa. And from mathematics, there was this work by Kono, where he could try and use a homological chain complex and argue that Cij can be written in terms of weighted minus 1 to the k times dimension of some vector space. So, in this sense, these integer coefficients can be accounted from other developments in string theory and the mathematicians works on homological chain complex. This is idea of looking at homological chain complex, uh, various ways matrix factorization, differential, but something which I liked was Lewis Kaufman who explained it in the North Theory Conference in 2009 by taking every crossing and do these kinds of two types of smoothings, either A or B. For example, here each crossing you do a A, a, a smoothing and number of B smoothings is what you write. So, number of B smoothings is 0 and you can define a J as number of B smoothings plus you can give signs to the regions. Here he has given plus and plus, so it will be 0 plus 2 which is 2. So, using these two variables n and j, you could write a kind of a homological chain where there is a del which takes you from n to n plus 1 with del squared equal to 0 and you could account for the Jones polynomial as, as dimension of that chain and you can write this. Okay, just to give you some pictures. So, if you do a del, over. I must? Okay, fine. Okay, so this is just a large end thing where I just want to flash this. For some manifold, we could use the Ugri Wafa and Gopakumar Wafa and try to write it in this fashion. And we could, you could see that from this result that it is having a closed string kind of expansion, but there were some subtleties which we were trying to give and then we tried to do it for SO and verify various things. So, this is our, just to summarize, we have an elegant way of computing symmetric colored home fly and two one colored home fly distinguishes mutants. These invariants are definitely useful to verify integrality structures predicted by UN and SO and topological string dualities. And some of the challenging problem for any R which could be rectangular or mixed can we find, can we get a better understanding of the variable T in homological invariants. And uh, there are some results Ed Witten has shown 
and uh, clarity on many examples is still waiting. And even though there is a refined Chern Simon which helps you to understand torus knot, we still have to find a way of understanding non torus knot. And uh, this is what I said. And there is also the spectral parameter dependent R matrices or vertex model. Can we understand from field theory? We have also done some works on A polynomials, volume conjectures, starting from relations to Gukov's work, but I will stop here. Thank you. So, there is a time for a question. For the bigness exchange, I think if we have some data, maybe we can see some pattern. I'm hoping. As of now, at least a rectangular representation, I think we should be able to finish. We're trying. <laughs>